Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about default comparisons and the three-way comparison operator in C++. So in a previous video, we looked at how we could overload operators and implement our own custom operators um, for our structs and our classes. Now, one thing that can be a little bit annoying in this regard is if we have to implement uh, multiple kind of trivial operators, so say our comparison operators, right? We have a lot of different kinds of comparisons we can do. We can check equality. We can check if something is less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, et cetera. Um, so it can just be a bit annoying having to implement every single one of these uh, member functions, right? If we, if we need them, that is. Now, fortunately with C++20, um, we got a little bit of help with this and that's through these default comparisons and our three-way comparison operator. And we can use these to uh, offload a lot of this work, uh, just like we do with things like our templates, we can offload this work to our compiler and have our compiler take care of generating these comparison operators for us. So let's go ahead and see how that works uh, with a simple example. So we'll go ahead and open up uh, a new file here called say uh, default compare.cpp and inside of here, we'll go ahead and include IO stream so we can do some printing. And of course, we're going to need a main function. Now, let's go ahead and define some struct S here, right? This will be the thing that we want to compare, but we don't want to have to write out all of these, uh, uh, all of these member functions, right? To do, to overload these compare operators. So we'll define some struct S that has a couple of data members. So maybe some integer A and also some integer B here. And then down here in our main function, let's uh, let's go ahead and initialize and, and create a couple objects of type S. So we'll create some S1 here that we'll initialize using aggregate initializations. We'll initialize A and B to one and two respectively. So if you wanna learn more about aggregate initialization, I'll go ahead and link down this CPP reference page uh, below the video, but high level idea here, uh, we're just initializing our data members in order here. So A is gonna be set equal to one, B is gonna be set equal to two. Okay, and we'll do something similar for S2 here, right? We'll initialize this to say uh, one and three this time, right? So slightly different. And let's say we want to be able to print out, uh, say if S1 is equal to S2 here, right? A simple equality comparison uh, with a new line character printed out afterwards. And you can see if we try to do this, we actually get a compiler error immediately. And the reason is, is that we haven't implemented this equals operator for our type S here that we've defined, right? So no match for operator equals for operand types S and S here. So we could of course go in here and implement our own version of this equality operator, just comparing all of the data members of S1 with all of the data members of S2. So we could certainly manually implement that, but you know, that's a decent amount of work, especially if we have a whole lot of data members. So it's much nicer if we can just default it and have our compiler take care of that work for us. And that's exactly what we can do with our, these default comparisons. So you can see here, we can implement these operators and set them equal to default to have our compiler uh, generate them for us. Similar to how we saw in the past, how we could default say uh, a copy constructor or a move constructor, et cetera, et cetera. So here, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll have a bool return type. So whether or not um, uh, our two objects are equal, then we're implementing this operator equals, and it's going to take some const uh, s by reference here. The method itself is, or member function is going to be const, right? It's not going to be updating anything. And then we'll go ahead and set it equal to default, right? So uh, we're telling our compiler that we want it to generate this operator equals method for us. And you can see that my compiler error went away here, right? It's no longer complaining that, um, you know, struct S, uh, this type here doesn't define say this equality operator, right? Now that we've defaulted it, our compiler is generating it uh, for us. It's responsible for this operator. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what happens here when we do this equality. So what it's going to do is a member wise equality. So it's going to compare the data member A for both objects and the data member B for both objects. If it ever finds that one of these is not equal, it'll return false. Um, if it goes through and finds that they're all equal, it'll return true. So either zero or one respectively. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll compile this default compare.cpp with G++ and call our output executable, just something like default compare. And you can see if we try to do this by default, uh, our compiler is going to complain with us because this is a relatively modern feature. Um, 
So it says that we need to compile with std equals C plus plus 20 or std uh, GNU plus plus 20, right, for GCC here. So we have to tell our compiler that we want to use this modern version of C plus plus. So we'll just put std equals C plus plus 20 here to get around this error. So you'll need a modern compiler for this. I believe GCC, um, uh, at least GCC 10 will support this. And you can see that now that we added that flag, we get our default compare executable. So we can go ahead and run this. And what do we see? Well, we see a return of zero here, which is um, equivalent to false here, right? S1 is not equal to S2. So this compare returned false, right? S1 has one and two for A and B respectively, and S2 has one and three, right? So this returned false. If we go, you know, went ahead and made them exactly equal. So both say one and two for A and B respectively, and we recompiled this and ran this. Of course, we get uh, one returned here, so true. Okay, so let's say we wanna do other kinds of comparisons here. So maybe we also wanna do greater than or equal to, right? Or maybe just greater than, something like this. Well, I'm gonna get this compiler error again. It's gonna say, no, no match for operator, uh, whatever it is, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, etc. cetera. Um, because we haven't implemented these operators, we've just defaulted this uh, equality operator here. So we're gonna get compiler um, errors here um, when we try to compile our application, when we use these different types of comparison. Now, there are cases where we want to implement, say, all of these uh, comparison operators, and but we don't wanna to have to do this manually, and we don't have to you know, list out every single operator that we want to implement. So instead, what we can use is this three-way comparison operator, uh, sometimes called the spaceship operator. So it looks a bit like a spaceship um, or a flying saucer here. It's this less than, equal to, greater than symbol. And we can use this to tell our compiler that I want you to implement all of our comparison operators for us. So let's see how we can do that. So here, we'll go ahead and make our return type auto here. And then instead of operator equals, we'll do operator, uh, this, this three-way comparison operator. So this less than, equal to, greater than. And then the rest of our... Uh, operator here is going to be exactly the same. We're still going to be taking in um, this some object of type s by reference, um, by const reference that is. It's still going to be a, a const member function here. It's not going to be updating anything about our object and we still want it defaulted. But now you can see it gets rid of our compiler error for our greater than comparison. And it also gets rid of it for greater than or equal to. We can still use equality here. Uh, you know, that still perfectly works. We can use, you know, less than, right? All of these different things. All of these operators work because we have them uh, defaulted up here using this three-way comparison operator. So let's go ahead and maybe do, you know, one of these comparisons. Maybe we'll check to see if S1 is greater than S2 here. So we'll go ahead and revert our change to S2 here. So S1 is has one and two for the data members respectively, and S2 has one and three. So we would expect this uh, to be false here because when it's doing this member-wise comparison, it's gonna see that B is actually less than the B of S2 here. So we should see false. So we'll save this and we'll recompile default compare.cpp and we'll run it and we get false, right? We get this zero printed out. But if we were to change this to something like, you know, 20 instead, um, and we change say, the first member to be say 10, right? Remember we're doing this member wise comparison. So we're gonna check, okay, is S1A greater than S1 or S2A? And then we're gonna check if uh, uh, S1B is greater than uh, S2B. Uh, so in this case, right, we're gonna check uh, the A's first and we'll see that, okay, that's bigger. So we can move on to the next element. And then we see that B is bigger as well. So we'll return true in this case. Okay, so let's go ahead and recompile this and run it. And we see we get true printed out or we get this one printed out. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. It's a bit of the basics on how we can default these comparison operators. Now there's a lot more we can get into around three-way comparison. So there's all of these things we can talk about you know, related to these partial orderings and weak orderings and how we actually define comparison between different objects. If we want something a little more special than just you know, comparing element wise, all of these members, right? If we want to do something uh, a, a little more special here and define what this means a little bit more precisely, but we'll go ahead and leave it here for today, right? In many cases, we just want these simple kinds of comparison operators, right? Ones that just member wise compare all of the elements. 
Now, of course, you can find this and any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch, and you can find them in the CPP from scratch repo. And that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.